Ladies and gentlemen, today we are looking at f***ed up looking food. Just some f***ed up looking food. Just some shit that is going to make me feel bad and nasty. Something that is going to make you feel bad about yourselves and it's going to be a good time. Starting with kettle dogs. Okay, now <laughs> first things first, there is nothing wrong with a kettle dog. If the kettle is clean, I think the moldiness around the kettle is the part that's really upsetting me. Because what does a kettle do but boil water? There's no issue with boiling your dogs in a kettle. You could boil, it's just like boiling them in a pot. Now, the problem is all of the disgusting mold, the empty two liter, the knife in a crack house. You can put the kettle water into a pot after it's boiled. No, it won't stay hot enough. Oh, this guy's never fucking kettle dogged. You think pouring the kettle water in a pot and putting the dogs in there is going to boil for long enough? No, you need to keep it hot. You keep the kettle on. So when it snaps and says, hey, water's boiled, you keep hitting the button to keep the things, the little coils going. Y'all don't have stoves? No. And it's actually really crazy that you would say that because I'm living a stove-free lifestyle. <laughs> this almost made you hurl. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. I would be down. So what if you actually had a dog kettle and a regular kettle and then you can like alternate between them as long as you're not making tea or instant coffee in your dog kettle, you would never have any flavor issues and it would always taste like dog. I, I would. Is this crazy? <laughs> okay, the people, the people would not. Two kettles cheaper than one stove chat. Open your eyes, sheeple. Zorio. Okay, this is what, Xanax in an Oreo? Now, my only issue is is how many are in there. That's an obscene amount. I, I feel like, I mean, I'm not the kind of person to, to pop Xanax all the time, but I don't think taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten at a time would be the right idea. Now, what if you kind of like mashed up, what if you took a mortar and pestle and like mashed up one Xanax and like sprinkled it salt bay style on an Oreo and then closed it? That could be like a nice way to take some Xanax to really take the edge off. Maybe you're having a bad day. Uh, this is for me a huge no. Dude, what? What? No way. <laughs> this guy says Xana melon. <laughs> Something is off about that cream. Yeah, it's a little darker than it should be. It almost looks like a mashed potato. Ooh, mushy pea sandwich. Now, this is unironically a British delicacy. Uh, this is this is a wood. I'm not even gonna let you guys vote on. People are such fucking lame asses. This is delicious. Yeah, the bread looks good. You get a little butter. You have mushy peas. Yeah, pea puree is amazing. What do you mean that ain't it? What's wrong with this? I think you're just looking at the color and saying, oh, I don't want to eat anything green when really it's delicious. Where's the gravy? A gravy would be helpful. Maybe there's a little gravy here. They lost when they named it a mushy pea sandwich. I mean, they just named it what it is. They're not trying to lie to you. It's like, did you guys know? What is it? It's like a, a, a toothfish. The Atlantic toothfish and the Chilean sea bass are the same fish, but people weren't buying the fucking toothfish and they were buying the Chilean sea bass. You guys can lie to yourselves. You guys can gaslight yourselves and buy whatever you want. You can call this the deluxe green Joe Blow Schmo. I will call it a mushy pea sandwich and I will like it as well. It's a reduction of peas infused onto a gluten base. Now we're talking. I need a toasted open face. Toasted open face, I think you're just mixing this up with avocado toast. Because if you toasted this and had this on top, you would think it's like some kind of avocado situation. Chicken nuggets. Why are these so dr dry? This is a not eat, right? Someone left this in the oven for days. Or is it bread? It feels like they're memeing on what it is. Yeah, that is not chicken. It almost looks like a beehive. I'm thinking this is a no for me, right? It's just a brown sponge. Imagine if they just cut up a sponge and fried it. That would actually be so funny. <laughs> One bite, Mr. Krabs dies. <laughs> oh, oh, a corn pop. Now, is it water around it? What makes this a corn pop? What is the gelatin aspect? I guess I want to know. Oh, corn juice. Like you had a can of corn. Oh, it's the corn juice from the can. For some reason, I assume this was on a cob, but now that I look at the orientation of the kernels, I think you're right. 
I think the juice is actually disgusting as fuck now that I think about it. It's also crazy that corn comes on a perfect delivery receptacle. You can just peel back the husk and eat your corn. You don't need to freeze it with corn water on a stick. Ooh, yo. Chat, anyone who says they wouldn't eat the spam and cheese taco is lying. Now, I prefer soft shell, but you know what? In a pinch, a hard shell will do you. Actually, Hawaiian culture, I love spam musubi. Or before I went vegetarian, I would eat a lot of spam musubi. Uncooked? Eh, you do your thing, you know? I would eat it, but this is not yo worth. <laughs> this is a yo. You should definitely fry the spam. I really like uh, spam as like the protein in a spaghetti, or I used to as a kid. Uh, or my uh, my grandparents would make a thing they called red macaroni, and it was macaroni with like ragu and cubed spam, <laughs> and you'd eat a little red macaroni, and it had big ass onions for some reason. As a kid, I hated onions. I would eat around the onions, but damn, I could eat some red macaroni right now. That's for sure. Is this a scented candle? Seven Eleven Big Bite Combo Hot Dog and Cola Scented Candle. Now that's lit. There are many times where I've walked into a 7-Eleven and felt, this is home. And the thought that I could bring the value of a 7-Eleven here. Now, the only thing is I'm worried I wouldn't be able to get the carbonated feeling of a soda dispenser in my nose. You know how when you fill up a soda at a dispenser, you can kind of like hold it up and get that fizzy feeling kind of pops. It's kind of like that a little bit of a cocaine feeling. That's what I would want. And unless this has like pop rocks in it, I'm not interested. Not interested at all. Frozen milk? I'm eating that good frozen milk as a nice before bed snack. What? Have I ever frozen milk? I didn't even think milk would freeze like this, but I don't know why it wouldn't. You mean ice cream? No, ice cream must be churned. Frozen milk is an ice cream. You must churn it. Milk pops exist? Don't say it like milk pops are normal. Please don't be porn. Milk pops? The thing that you're saying is a milk pop is not that. This is not the same. <laughs> Lightly churned. That's zero churned. No condensed milk, no cream milk popsicle. What, what gives it the color? I feel like I should be weeping. Is there no... I tried this recipe. My family loved it and wanted me to make some more. Pistachios. Oh, that's... And cashews. And almonds! It's a goddamn nut gangbang. When I was 12, I ate popsicles to get over my parents' divorce. Feel strong, man. <laughs> when I was four, my parents got divorced. I went to my dad's house and I ate a whole box of macaroni and I threw up everywhere. And then I didn't eat macaroni again for 10 years. Oh, you also put sugar in there. This is not the same thing. Frozen milk is crazy. Benadryl minute rice. <gasps> oh, you ever got allergies but are also a little bit peckish as well? Oh, it made it kind of pink. Yeah. I don't know. It feels like there's too much Benadryl here. <laughs> Mom, Garfield is on dat bean. <laughs> Twitter is sometimes my favorite place on the internet, and sometimes it's my least favorite place on the internet. Guacamorios. Oh, wait. Okay. Bear with me for a second. We don't put guacamole in Oreos, but what if we put guacamole in like a Ritz cracker? Like a, a more of a salty treat instead of a sweet treat. I will not bear with you for a second, just one second. All these foods are making me want to take the ex-wife back. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> shoe lasagna? Chat, tell me you don't want a little shoe lasagna. This is a hot prank. You ever get the boys over for a sleepover, and then when they fall asleep first, you spend, I don't know, three to four hours making lasagna from scratch, and then you make the lasagna and you put it in their shoe, and then when they wake up, you go, you got shoe lasagna. Dino nugget chicken parm. I've made this before, kind of, without dino nuggets. Sometimes I'll buy veggie chicken patties, and then I'll, you know, have a little leftover spaghetti, and I'll just put it on top, and I'll have a little stanzy chicken parm. May need to be reminded what... <laughs> Rat milk? Can you milk a rat? I mean, they have nipples, so I assume you can milk them. How would you get so much milk? How would you get so much milk from a rat? A lot of rats. You <laughs> suck real hard is also so funny. <laughs> oh, it takes 22 rats. 
This has got to be more than 22 rats. I don't know why, but it feels like Rocket Slacker knows more than a normal amount about rat milk. True.